came yeah. in I came in there were no lights on. It was smoky in here from all that sage. Like <laughs> Allie is I mean, she's always been there. Like she's the free spirit. She's she's just she goes with it. She's chill, she's shy, she's creative, she's confident, she's I mean, like I said, she's me. And really honestly, I just fully embraced her maybe like three or four months ago. Honestly, like when I started this blog, I think is when I fully embraced who I am. It's a tapestry. Yeah, come on. Says, I'm, a, I'm a little white girl from <laughs> who went to FSU. Like, straight up, it's a tapestry, you know? Uh, um, Allie is somebody. I mean, Allie is me. I am Allie. But, you know, my, my full name is Allison. Um, and gone by Allison my entire life. Um, my family, they all call me Allison. Um, you know, I have a few select friends that I go way back with who call me Allison, and that's okay. But, I have always felt like Allie, not Allison. Um, you know, Allison grew up in a very, I don't want to say constricted environment, but I grew up in an environment where, you know, materialism was very important. Um, your image was very important. And I was just never really me. I was on a path that I thought that I had to, to live out for other people. You know, I was very school oriented, very school driven, um, very set on having a nine to five career. Um, like shit, I was in social work for a while, you know? Um, and Allie, Allie is, I mean, she's always been there. Like she's the free spirit. She's. She just, she goes with it. She's chill, she's shy, she's creative, she's confident, she's, I mean, like I said, she's me. And really, honestly, I just fully embraced her maybe like three, four months ago. Honestly, like when I started this blog, I think is when I fully embraced who I am, like fully embraced Allie. It's been hard. It's been really hard because, you know, when you make that shift you disappoint a lot of people. Um, a lot of people who, you know, they love you and they may have the best intentions, but they see you for what they want to see you as. They see you as somebody um, who before was on this amazing path, um, who was going somewhere with her life and then just completely did a 180 and they don't understand you. And it's a struggle because I've come to realize that Allie, you know, this art, this blog, it, it's not meant to be understood by anybody but me. Um, it's, it'll lead me to the people that I need to meet, you know? And that's what it's been doing so far, which is why I'm so grateful that I finally embraced her. Being a woman um, behind the scenes in the music industry is a very tough role to have, um, especially if you're an attractive woman. And that sounds, when I hear, you know, not when I hear, but I can only imagine from the outside looking in, like you hear somebody complain about being attractive, you want to smack them upside the head. Like, shut up, <laughs> you know? Like, this is not, this is not something you complain about. But as a woman, especially in today's day and age, um, and especially if you are attractive on any scale, it's almost difficult for people to take you seriously. As crazy and fucked up as that sounds, it really is because Appear, people see your appearance first and they cr collect judgment based off what they see before ever having to meet you or before ever having to explore your work. And more than anything, what I am so grateful for um, over this last month and really just moving forward is that I have come into contact with people who want to work with me because of me, like because of my work, not just what I look like, not just because of how I dress or anything like that. They they see my work for what it is and they believe in it and they want to help me get to the next level. And that, I've never experienced a family like dynamic like that before. It's it's something really special. Um, they, 
fan if you ever see this. Shout out. Talk about a moment that really pivoted my journey, uh, making the transition from, you know, Allison to Allie. Uh, I was in Orlando uh, with my family. We were on a vacation and... <clears throat> Oh man, I was drunk as shit. And we were <laughs> we were sitting by the pool. Um we were sitting by the pool and I was in a relationship at the time, um, with a man. And that's, you know, neither here nor there, but you know, I was in a committed relationship. I mean, as committed as you can be at eighteen, but um I just remember I was sitting by the pool, um, and I turned to my stepdad of all people and I just said dad and he said yeah and I was like I'm gay kinda and he said what and I said I'm fluid and he just looked at me and he started crying and he said I know um, love is love I love you thank you and it oh I'm tearing up talking about it like it uh it was beautiful. And my stepdad, you know, I it's crazy to think that he's the person I ended up coming out to first, you know, opening up that part of myself. But it was a really beautiful moment. And uh, I'll never forget that. And I don't think, no, actually, I know for a fact that if that moment never would have occurred, if I would have stayed quiet and anything else, it would, I wouldn't be in this position I am today because it's such a crucial element of who I am and what I do in the weirdest way because to be able to really be authentic in your work you have to put your all into it you have to pour everything you have into it you have to be authentic and if that part of me wasn't open I don't think I'd be here you know it's just it's one of those things it's one of those milestones for me I, uh, I, you know, I'm not a musician by any means. I tried. God, Lord knows I tried, but that just was never my thing. Um, but music in itself, you know, talking about energy, I think music is a universal language for people. Um, you know, you think about your memories, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's incredible how, you know, you can go years without hearing a song. And then you hear it one day on the radio and you're brought back to specifically a moment. And it's so very real. You're, you, you're overwhelmed with those feelings again. You know, you're right back where it was. And it, it could be good, bad, anything. There's so much power in music. And it seeps into every aspect of our lives, whether we want to see it or not. And that's what's so incredible about talking with all of these local artists is that they feel the same way they've acknowledged it in the same breath and that is truly something special to give that kind of love and appreciation for what music really is and I mean shit like it's just it's really cool you know when all else fails you don't have anything to talk about with anybody talk about music you know like it's it's just one of those things um and it has a special place in my heart, for sure. I listen to music every single day. Probably way too much, but it helps. <clears throat> what do you feel like your life purpose is? To help others shine. Um, yeah, to help others shine, to help others step into their power. Um, I have always, and I'm not really sure why, but I've always been very confident in myself in terms of just who I am, what I bring to the table, um, just all of that. And what I've noticed through my interactions with others is that normally I end up giving them a platform to to meet a part of themselves that maybe they hadn't thought of meeting yet. Um, and I know it's, it sounds, it almost sounds cocky, but 
I genuinely think that when you are confident in your own ability to shine, other people will mirror that. And I have such a deep love and appreciation for people who shine but don't know it yet. And I, it's a beautiful thing when I come in contact with somebody and we have a conversation or we work together and I see them step into that power. And nine times out of 10, I'm, I don't even want to take credit for helping them step into that power, but just being able to be present in that moment when they shine and they step into who they really are and they break through that. Uh, I think that's I think that's my purpose is being present in those moments and just feeling that joy because that's that's very rare and it's something that should be appreciated. Yeah. What put you on the path to um, being a journalist? Is that how you refer to yourself? Um, you know, truthfully, I'm not sure what I refer to myself as yet. This project is so new still. Um, I really just started it this past March. Um, the growth um, since March has been completely unexpected. So I'm kind of growing with it as well. Um, you know, my roles are growing with it too. Um, journalists, I love the sound of that, honestly. Um, but I, I don't know, I think just content creator um, would be a better way to put it right now. And who knows, that might change. I'm not sure. We'll check in like six months. We'll see where, we'll see where we're at. You know, it might change, who knows. Okay, okay. Content yeah. creator. Mm -hmm. I dig it. I dig it. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been creating content mm -hmm. and what are your mediums of creativity? Mm. Well, I've honestly been a creator my whole life. That sounds really cheesy, but I've always been a writer. Um, ever since I was little, you know, I was... I would lock myself in our office and write movie scripts and stuff like that. And they were terrible. I mean, they were absolutely horrible, but I would even like print them out and autograph them and like pass them out at like family barbecues and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but it really, it just kind of went from there. Um, in terms of mediums, like I'm very spiritual. Um, so I absolutely believe in being in tune with yourself. Um, and so when I'm actually creating, when I'm writing or when I'm editing videos, pictures, whatever it may be, I have to be in total silence. Um, and that has been a process for me because I used to be one of those people who convinced myself that I could work and listen to music at the same time, uh, do whatever, have TV playing in the background. Um, and then I realized that really all it came down to was me just being uncomfortable with silence. Um, but that feeling of being uncomfortable, what I've learned is really the best approach. It's the best medium for my creativity because it forces me to think outside the box and to have no distractions and to really just go full into what I'm working on at the moment. I can dig that. Mm -hmm. I too can't, I can't create yeah. with the, it's hard for me to create with other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to like literally be in my zone. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's channeling. For yeah. me, it's more channeling than it is just creating. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. not as much technical as it is energy. That's it. It's very healing for me. I think that's the, the best thing about it is that I'm able to heal through it because a lot of emotion goes into it. A lot of passion, um, fear, anger, it all, I pour it all into my work and that's rough but it's it's where my best stuff is created so I'm gonna keep rolling with it see where it takes me I love it I thank love you it. you're welcome so you've been creating content your whole life mm -hmm. and as far as the areas of content do you have a favorite do you have a favorite medium writing absolutely uh, like I said I've always been a writer um, I, you know, like I said, I, I started off, you know, writing my movie scripts and stuff when I was a kid, and then it evolved into poetry, and I have a very, very special place in my heart for the art of poetry. Um, most of my poetry is very dark, it's very emotional, it's sad, um, but it's, it's healing. 
like I said earlier, and it's, it's how I recognize and identify my emotions more than anything. Um, so yeah, writing, because to me, I don't think there's anything more beautiful than putting your thoughts into words. Um, and I know that seems like such a simple concept, you know, putting your thoughts into words, you know, we do it all the time when we speak to each other, but being able to write it down and to write it with such conviction that causes a reaction in somebody else, you know, whether it be emotional, physical, really anything, that to me is something very special. And I have always just found the beauty in it. I've always been attracted to it. And it's, it's always been what I've floated back to. No matter where I go, anything else, I always come back to writing, no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So, your favorite snack is also goldfish. Because <laughs> I'm a toddler. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, I'm a toddler. My favorite snack is goldfish. <laughs> favorite snack is goldfish. Uh -huh. You're a vodka, vodka and cranberry girl. I am a vodka and cranberry girl. Always okay. have been. All right, so what's your, what's your favorite drinking experience? <laughs> Oh, God. Um, <laughs> you know, honestly, I'm going to have to say my 21st birthday. That was... <laughs> that was an amazing night. Um, I was surrounded by all of my people. Um, we started out at a restaurant. You know, we ended up at the club. Uh, we were drinking pre-gaming like, pre the entire time. And we ended up, you know on the beach at like 3 30 in the morning um and we just drunk as shit you know we're all twisted out of our minds but we just ended up on the beach bullshitting and talking about how far we've come as people as friends as family and it was a really beautiful night too the sky was very clear you know you could see all the stars and it was just one of those moments that i I mean, thinking about it now, I'm getting goosebumps. I was genuinely happy in that moment. And I was genuinely at peace with everybody who was around me and what we were experiencing collectively. So, yeah, I would I would have to say my 21st would probably be my best drinking experience. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. I have such a deep love and appreciation for people who shine but don't know it yet and I it's a beautiful thing when I come in contact with somebody and we have a conversation or we work together and I see them step into that power and nine times out of ten I'm, I don't even want to take credit for helping them step into that power but just being able to be present in that moment when they shine and they step into who they really are and they break through that uh I think that's I think that's my purpose is being present in those moments and just feeling that joy because that's that's very rare and it's something that should be appreciated. Yeah.